What's up, Bulls Nation? My name is Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be discussing something that I didn't think we would be seeing so soon. The Chicago Bulls players, players only meeting in the locker room after the game. It's happened oh so quickly, and I cannot believe it. Now, we're going to be discussing whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing in this video. Before we get any further, if you like the video and you want to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow, and comment down below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls, their game today, and the player only meeting that we've had right after game one. There's already problems with the Chicago Bulls in game one. Now, I do want to shout out Casey Johnson for tweeting these things out to us so we can actually have a video to talk about right after the game. Um, he's always tweeting out good news, and I very much appreciate his work. But either way, I'm going to read some of his tweets and put some of his tweets on the screen so you know where they're coming from. Or you could check out his the Twitter yourself, and you could probably react to some of the comments that was going on over there. But there's a lot that came out from from obviously Billy Donovan, from Nikola Vucevic, and from Zach Levine. So let's quickly talk about it. The first tweet I want to discuss is when Casey Johnson tweeted, Billy Donovan said players were having a conversation with strong words when he walked into the post-game locker room. He asked if they needed more time. The players said yes, and Billy Donovan walked out. Billy Donovan likes that the players were taking ownership of themselves. That's the first thing. So right after that blowout, disappointment, lack of fight, lack of effort. Obviously, again, poor defense, poor offense, whatever you want to call it. Clearly, the Bulls were not happy with their own performances. So as much as you could question me or other Bulls content creators or Bulls fans around the world for being overly negative or for not liking what we saw, clearly the players are feeling the exact same way as they're taking ownership, as they are obviously having strong worded conversations with each other. There's something else that came from Nikola Vucevic's mouth that I wanted to tweet or I wanted to read as well. And it was that a lot of guys said a lot of good things, things that we needed to be said. I think we could really use this team, uh, this to learn and change some of the things that we need to change. It wasn't anything crazy, no fighting or none of that. It was really constructive. Um, it was maybe one of the first times since I've been here that it was like this and it was really needed. First and foremost, you're telling me throughout all of last season, you didn't have a conversation like you did at the very beginning of this season. To me, that is just poor on multiple levels. Again, I think there's always a time for a player meeting. I think there's always a time for a conversation to be had, especially when you're playing as poorly as you did in this very game. And the fact that there was no conversations last year makes me very much more angry about last year. But thankfully... Last year's done. It's gone. We, we can't reflect last year. We have to move forward. But the fact that nothing happened there is quite frustrating. But again, first game of the season and they're having conversations like this. Last but not least, Zach Levine said something that I wanted to read out. Again, a KC Johnson tweet here. I don't feel like we played with enough heart and that's on us. It's unacceptable. I don't think it's a thing people do on purpose either, but we got to come together during those opponent runs. There you go. Those are all the tweets I wanted to bring to you guys from K Casey Johnson discussing this player, I guess, meeting after the game. And there's a lot to dive into there. Obviously, this is the first type of meeting that they've had where it felt strong-minded and that it was constructive and that people were taking ownership. I can't believe that. And I don't believe that, actually, because last year, I'm positive there were some tweets and there were some conversations about player-only only meetings. Um, but maybe it wasn't as constructive as this one. Maybe it wasn't, wasn't as talkative as this one. Maybe it wasn't encouraging words like this one. I don't know what the difference is between this player-only meeting and every other player meeting that the Bulls have had. But hopefully this one will actually force some change and stuff of that nature because that is the goal of having a player only meeting to take responsibility to take ownership to share accountability and to be able to bring themselves closer together. If that's not the purpose of a player meeting, then there should never be a player meeting. A player meeting should not just be, it's your fault, look what you did, it's all you, you're the reason why we're failing. That's not what a purpose of a player meeting should be. Everybody should be taking ac accountability and sharing that accountability. So I'm hoping that's what we saw. I'm hoping that's what happened. And we'll have to see. Deep down the line, we'll have to see whether or not this player meeting will actually result to anything. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing. Zach Levine said that the Bulls didn't play with enough heart. That's the captain of, of, of the Chicago Bulls that, that said that. 
That's the number one guy that said that to Bulls Nation, to everybody across the world, that the Bulls didn't play with enough heart. So again, you could question the Bulls' effort. You could question the Bulls' heart. There are some people that probably believe the Bulls did play with heart at the end of the day, and they just got outclassed. Maybe that's how you feel, but when the captain of the Chicago Bulls, when the leader, the most paid guy on the Bulls team said, I felt like we didn't play with enough heart, and it's not something that you do purposely, it's just something that you got to handle, then that's a problem to me, because that's the last thing we should see. Again, I said it in the last video. I said it in the game reaction. If you can't fight, if you can't play with heart toward game one of the season, at the very beginning of the season, how can anyone expect you to play with heart at the very end of the season? Game 82, probably when that game means the most. A situation where you could avoid the play-in or make the play-in. A situation where you could enter the play-in or be out of the playoffs completely. Or a situation where you could get home court advantage or you fall into 5th, 6th, 7th in the Eastern Conference. How can we expect the Bulls team to fight in those situations if they can't fight game one when it's 0-0 and your season is starting? It's just beginning. Every win is important. You will soon find that out. This game is frustrating even at game one because it does mean a lot and it has massive ramifications losing this type of game. It's as simple as that in my eyes. I can accept losing. These Bulls team, they've accepted losing clearly because they lose a lot more than they win. But I can't accept people saying that we didn't play with heart. And I can't accept when people say, or when, when, when we see it firsthand, that this Bulls team is not trying hard enough or they beat themselves up after a run. That's horrible to hear and it's horrible to see. And it's the last thing that I want to see in here. So... That's the, another thing I have to get it out of the way about Zach Levine's comments. I appreciate that he said him. I appreciate he's being honest, and I always appreciate honesty. But it sucks that that is exactly what we're seeing, and that's how we can identify it as. And that's really, really frustrating. Um, I had to get that out of the way. A passionate response, I think, from me there, in all honesty. But let's take the passion out of this. Is it a good thing to see a player meeting this early? The answer is yes and no. Yes, it's, it, it's important because... Look, there's clearly some kinks we need to figure out. And I don't think you're going to figure it out by being silent. Tory Craig said something very early on in preseason. And I think he even said it in preseason as well during it. That this Bulls team is very quiet and they need to talk more. This is them talking. Let them talk. That's fine. That's the positive of this. Again, you've got to sort these things out. And sometimes player communication is the only way it's going to get done. Taking accountability. There's a lot of young guys that I feel like are very quiet and won't say much in this Bulls team. So these leaders, these veteran players, these guys that do have the capability to speak their mind, it needs to lead the conversation. And I think that's a good thing. So yes, it's good in that avenue. It's bad because this is game one. And if this is game one and they already can't get on the same page and, they, and there's already a disconnect there and there's already a little bit of, I guess, sharing the blame or the pl playing the blame game there, if that's what's happening, then it's bad because we haven't even really started the season yet in many ways. It's 0-1 at the moment and the Bulls are falling apart in front of our very eyes. So it depends on how the conversation went, but it can be a bad thing as well. It can be bad that, at the fact that it's only game one and there's player conversations of this magnitude that it's being expressed to the media now. So we'll wait and see. We'll figure it out. And last, before I send you off in this very interesting video, I would say, actions speak louder than words. Them having words after the game is great, but their actions don't reflect words. Their actions of how angry they were were not reflected in that game against OKC. They did not show the fiery passion that they showed after the game. So how can we expect those actions to reflect in the next game against Toronto? If these are the conversations that they're having, they better be backed up with action. So we'll wait and see how we respond against Toronto. Will we have the actions necessary to back up those confrontations in the locker room? Or will we still be that Bulls team that is scared or gives up on themselves before the game really even kicks on we'll wait and see actions speak louder than words just because words are being said does not mean that actions will follow so let's wait and see but i'll end this video here thank you all for watching drop a like and a follow and or subscribe if you are new i'll see you in the next one stay safe stay healthy and stay tuned for more take care and peace